What's the limit of n times sine of 2 pi times n factorial times e? So fact, we have n factorial. Uh, so motivates us to use the definition of e. One of the definitions is this definition. 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus all the way up to 1 over n factorial plus all the way to infinity. Right. The other definition might not be that useful because this definition involves factorial. So, in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna call a n equal e minus the finite sum one plus one plus one over two factorial plus all the way up to one over n factorial. Right. So obviously. A n should equal to e minus 1 over n plus 1 factorial plus 1 over n plus 2 factorial all the way to infinity. Right. So in fact, I'm going to say if I get rid of all the other positive terms, a n should be bigger than this term. right? So a n should be bigger than 1 over n plus 1 factorial. So that is, first I'm going to extract 1 over n factorial. Right? So what do I have here? So n plus 1 factorial is just n factorial times n plus 1. n plus 1. So 1 over n plus 1. Likewise, next term should be 1 over n plus 1 times n plus 2. Right? Next term is 1 over n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3. Right? All the way up to infinity. Right? So if I just say, if I replace n plus 2 with n plus 1, and also n plus 2 with n plus 1, and also n plus 3 with n plus 1. So every denominator will become smaller, so that the whole fraction will become bigger. So an is no larger than 1 over n factorial times 1 over n plus 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 quantity squared plus 1 over n plus 1 quantity cubed all the way to infinity. So this is obviously geometric sequence infinite, infinite series that is equal to 1 over n factorial times 1 minus common ratio 1 over n plus 1 Right, first term is 1 over n plus 1. Right? 1 minus the something that's approaching 0. So we only have this. This is the result of the infinite series. So what is that equal to? So that means we multiply by n plus 1 on both top and bottom. We have 1 over n factorial times just 1, and we have n plus 1 minus 1. Right? We, in fact, have this. So 1 over n factorial times n. Right? So we have our conclusion. So a n is not only bigger than 1 over n plus 1 factorial, but no larger than Perhaps let's just, that doesn't matter, right? So 1 over n factorial times n. Right, bigger than, or bigger than or equal to, doesn't matter. So from here, we cannot replace e straight away with something like Stirling formula, something that's equivalent to e, right? Stirling formula, so. n over e to the power of n square root of 
two pi n. Right, if I'm correct, so something like this. Yeah, so this is equivalent to n factorial when it comes to when it comes to limit, right? They so this over this approaching one as n approach infinity. So if it were normal multiplication or division, we can simply replace n factorial with this. But since this is not uh, normal multiplication, since this uh, uh, what is it? Composite, composite function. So we cannot do that. But we can somehow use this estimation. We can still estimate the uh, the inside stuff. So what is that? So first of all, a n equals e. So, so e should equal to a n plus finite sum. Right. a n plus finite sum. So if I have 2 pi times n factorial times e, what do I have? 2 pi times n factorial times e, n factorial times e, which is 2 pi times n factorial times this stuff, a n plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial, all the way up to 1 over n factorial. Right, this is what I have. So the fact that we have we have n times sine of this. Right? So sine of 2 pi n factorial times e. Simply sine of just this stuff, right? So I can just distribute this onto each of them, right? The fact that n factorial times one, still a positive integer, right? n factorial times one over two factorial, still positive integer. n factorial times one over n factorial, still positive integer. So I have positive integer times two pi, multiple of two pi, periodic function, Sine, so it doesn't matter. So that's how I get rid of uh, all the other terms and only left with just 2 pi n factorial times a n. Right. 2 pi n factorial times a n. Now it should, it should be very convenient. So I've just established sine of 2 pi n factorial times e is equal to sine of just 2 pi n factorial times a n. Right? The reason is because we've, uh, since sine is a periodic function, right? so this term times uh, every other term will just turn out to be a multiple of just 2 pi, right? just periodic function, just uh, ignore all of that. So we have this. And not only that, we have instead <coughs> estimated the value of a n, right? So uh, something that's approaching zero, obviously. And it's approaching zero very, very fast because it's squeezed in between those two guys, right? But those two guys both approach zero very, very fast because it, it's uh, factorial, right? Very fast. Now, how about i, I times 2 pi n times a n, right? So 2 pi n factorial times a n should maintain the direction of inequality, right? So 2 pi n factorial times this, 2 pi n factorial, n factorial gone, 2 pi over n, right? And bigger than 2 pi n factorial. So n factorial, n plus one, right? After I cancel out n factorial, two pi. Now, notice that n will approach infinity and the inside, this is the angle, the angle. So 
Looks like the angle is going to be small enough when n gets big enough. All right, for example, especially when n is bigger than four. Right, in that case, of course, uh, two pi over n, right, n is the, n is the bigger, less than two pi over four, less than half pi. Right, so meaning my angle should not only no larger than half pi, but bigger than zero. Right? So meaning my angle should be in the first quadrant. Right? Since the first quadrant sine function is increasing, right, then we're safe. Right, sorry. So in this case, sine increasing, right? sine uh, whatever, alpha alpha in this first quadrant. So that means if I apply sine on both sides, I should still maintain the direction. Right? So which means sine of 2 pi n factorial a n less than sine of 2 pi over n bigger than sine of 2 pi over n plus 1, right? But this is, this sine, this sine 2 pi times n factorial times e, we still have n in front, right? So which means n times sine of 2 pi, or n factorial times e. Right? Like I said, it's the same thing, right? Times e. Less than uh, n sine 2 pi over n. Bigger than n sine 2 pi over n, n plus 1. Right? So our desired sequence can be squeezed, right? So hopefully both of them have limits, right? just hopefully. So remember the well-known, the sine x over x as x approaches zero, the well-known limit, one, right? So as long as we make angle exactly the same as inside as our angle then we're fine right so maybe perhaps let's just divide so th this guy this should be equal to n times sine of the whatever angle as long as I divide by the same angle, right? Same thing, 2 pi over n plus 1. And not only that, I have to, after I divide it, I should multiply by the same thing, right? 2 pi over n plus 1, right? So that way, this will just approach 1, right? Exactly the same angle, right? approach 1. How about this? n times this stuff, right? Since n and n plus 1, they have exactly the same dominant leading power, right? both polynomial, right? leading power just 1. So they just approach 1, approach infinity at exactly the same speed, right? So n over n plus 1 should approach 1. So whole thing should approach 2 pi. How about this? N sine 2 pi over n, right? Assume, hopefully it's gonna be a similar situation. So n times sine of uh, 2 pi over n, also divided by the same angle. Right? Multiply by the same thing, 2 pi over n, likewise. This will approach 1, 
right? As n because n approaches infinity, the angle approach zero, right? So n times this, n times this, right? Still approaching two pi, right? So it means this and this both approach two pi. This sequence, desired sequence, of course. Approaching 2 pi. Squeeze theorem. 